Hi there and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers Weimar and Nazi Germany from the GCSE Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. I'm 100% self-funded so if you like my content please consider buying me a coffee to keep me going. Last time we looked at Stresemann's economic policies that ended hyperinflation and stabilised the economy in the 1920s. You will remember that although Stresemann resigned as Chancellor in November 1923, he continued as Foreign Secretary until 1929. Today we're going to have a look at his foreign policies and how Stresemann improved Germany's relations with other countries. This was really important for Germany because defeat in World War I and the Treaty of Versailles had led to support for extremist parties such as the NSDAP and the Communists. By improving foreign relations, Stresemann would be able to show the population that Germany was still a proud nation and would build confidence in the Weimar Republic. Increased trade with other nations would help to reduce hardships caused by hyperinflation. Stresemann set out to ensure that Germany was part of any important international pacts or treaties. In 1925, he was able to negotiate Germany's place in the Locarno Pact. This was an agreement between Britain, Italy, France and Belgium. It mainly cemented some of the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, but it also agreed that Germany could apply to become a member of the League of Nations, which was banned in the treaty. Additionally, unlike the Treaty of Versailles, Germany had a say in its terms. It had a couple of key features. Firstly, Germany agreed to the new border with France, giving up its claim to Alsace-Lorraine and promising to keep the peace on the border. Secondly, it agreed to the demilitarization of the Rhineland. These terms were important because they made war with France much less likely. In fact, Stresemann was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1926 for preventing war. The people of Germany could see Germany being treated as an equal in these talks. This boosted support for the Weimar Republic because people could see that it would be able to restore Germany as an equal in the world. However, not all parties supported the Locarno Pact. Some of the extremist parties hated it because they saw it as Germany giving in to the the Treaty of Versailles. You will remember that one of Woodrow Wilson's 14 points was to set up the League of Nations. This was done after World War I. The League of Nations was a council of countries who met to discuss world problems such as border conflicts and invasions and to prevent wars. Interestingly, the USA had not joined the League due to its own internal politics, but it was made up of many of the other powerful nations in the world. Germany had not been allowed to join initially under the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, but in 1926 Stresemann was able to persuade the League to allow Germany to join. This gave Germany equality with other powers in Europe and beyond, and it was welcomed by most in Germany as a positive for Germany standing in the world. However, as with the Locarno Pact, it was rejected by the extremist parties because they saw the League of Nations as a symbol of the Treaty of Versailles, and therefore they wanted nothing to do with it. The final treaty you need to know about is the Kellogg-Briand Pact of 1928. This pact was between 61 nations and it promised that the countries would not use war as a way to achieve their aims. Although the USA was not a member of the League of Nations, this was a way it could show goodwill to the aim of world peace. Again, this improved Germany's standing in the world because Germany was an equal in the negotiations and as signatories. This led to further support from the majority of Germans because it showed that Germany was now considered a powerful country with a say over international issues. Also show people that the Weimar Republic was respected internationally. Once again though, the pact did not receive support from the extreme parties because it had not removed the Treaty of Versailles and Germany was still weighed down by the reparation payments. Overall, Stresemann's aim was to restore faith in the Weimar Republic and reduce the hardships faced by German people. In this, he was very successful. The economic and foreign policies of the 1920s led to a reduction in support of the extreme parties from 40% in 1924 to 28% in 1928. When President Ebert died in 1925, he was replaced by Paul von Hindenburg, a moderate, but also the former field marshal of the Kaiser's army, which pleased moderates and those who saw Ebert as one of the November criminals who had betrayed Germany by surrendering in World War I. However, disaster struck in 1929 when Stresemann died of a heart attack in October at just 51 years of age. His death was quickly followed by a world economic crisis, which would change everything. Okay. That is everything you need to know about Stresman's foreign policies of the 1920s. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. I do love to hear from you and I always reply as quickly as I can. I'm 100% self-funded, so please don't forget if you like my content, I really appreciate it if you buy me a coffee to keep me going. The link is in the description and that is everything for today and I will see you next time.